Hello my dear friends, hello my dear listeners, how are you all? I hope you are doing your best to serve your duties in your own situation with utmost love and honesty. So today we are here to read the next part of the story Malunchumala, the wreath in a flower garden. This story is taken from Bengal fairy tales written by Francis Bradley, Bradley Bird, and it was first published in the year 1920 and this book was illustrated by or rather is illustrated by Avanindranath Thakur. So till now what we came to know that Malun Chumala, she with her baby husband died or dead baby husband both were in the burning pyre. But somehow, somehow, she was not burned. So what have what happened next? Let's proceed. Mm, okay. Uh, okay. At length, a beautiful girl appeared before her and muttered some mantras over the dead child which at once recalled it to life. After this, other visitors daily brought milk and other necessaries. Uh, for the prince and Malonjo passed her days in his company, regardless of her own privations privations and dangers. The infant smiled and she smiled with him. He cried and she was unhappy. She bathed him with her tears, dried his body with her hairs and putting the black paint beneath his eyes, kissed him a thousand times. The spirits of hell could not bear this happy sight and to starve him they drank up all the sly the milk on which he lived. Maloncho was forced to last to leave the place and go with the child at her breast in search of fresh milk. She went far without success and while still seeking she was waylaid by a tiger who called upon her to throw the babe to him, saying, For seven days I have been fasting. Give me the child and I will break my fast. You will have many other children in time and it will be an act of pity if you now give me a mill. This is not my son, but my husband, replied Maluncho. Of what use to you will be this small bit of flesh? It will be like a blade of grass, given blade of grass given to an elephant for food spare this poor infant and eat me to which the tiger replied in surprise what this is your husband i will eat neither of you tell me what has brought you hither maluncho thereupon told the tiger her story on hearing which he exclaimed mother i stand as your protector. I will build a hut here for you and as long as you will remain under my eyes, death itself will not dare approach you. Thank you, tiger, said Maluncho gratefully. Can you tell me where I can get milk for my husband? Milk is very rare here, answered the tiger, but I will try and get it for you. So saying, the tiger went on his Errand, leaving Maluncho crying in great anxiety. During the tiger's absence, its mate came to the spot and said, Who is it that is crying for milk in this jungle place? There is no milk cow in this part of the country. I can have her give you some milk from my breast. Maluncho gladly accepted the offer and the tiger who soon returned without having succeeded in obtaining any milk was delighted at the arrangement. A hut was built by him for the poor girl and the boy who was named Chandramanik, thrived on the milk of the tigress. His 
playmates being her cubs. Five years passed in this way when one day Malunchu told the tiger that she was weary of her solitary life and that she had began to long for human companionship again. You want to leave us? exclaimed the tiger. Exclaimed the tiger. What is it that you want? Tell me and you shall have it. My husband is a king's son, replied Maluncho, and now that he is five years old, he must be put to school, so that later on he may be qualified to fill his proper position. There are learned scholars here, the tiger assured her, and I can get as many of them as you like to tutor your husband. No, uncle, forgive me. Maluncho answered him, I will go and live in the nearest town where you may visit me as often as you please. The tiger at length yielded, though with great reluctance and the objects of his love and care left him. It was a great blow to him, to the tigress and to the cubs and they suffered greatly on account of it. The Kota's daughter and the prince, in the meantime, reached in four days a large stretch of jungle from which there seemed to be no outlet. They were too tired to move on and so they sat under a tree near a flower garden belonging to a Malini which had produced no flowers for many years. The tank in it had become dry and it was obvious that no one had recently visited the garden. On the approach of the two travellers, however, the garden became suddenly full of flowers and bees and butterflies crowded there. The Malini, noticing the change, ran towards the garden and great delight, with great delight and was greatly surprised to find the strangers seated under a tree. She thus arrested addressed Malunchumala, O oh mother, who are you, a human being, a goddess or a pari? I am neither a goddess nor a pari, but a houseless girl wandering about with this dear boy, replied Malunchu sadly. Come into my house, cried the Malini, full of sympathy. This is not a fit place for you. I had a sister's daughter who was left me these twelve years. She was like you in age, beauty, and every other respect, and you remind me much of her. As a favor, live with me. I will call you niece, and you in turn shall call me aunt. At length, it was settled that Maluncho and the prince should leave with the Malini. Maluncho thought that though the arrangement would in no way give her access to society yet from there she might come to know the events of the outside world at the request of her hostess she ate the still still rice given her and gave the milk placed before her to chandramanik when it was evening she did the domestic duties appropriate to her to the hour and retired for the night. The Malini within a short time obtained a modest income from the garden and had two new rooms built on to her house, in one of which she herself slept, giving the other to her guests and leaving the old room vacant for the time being. One day Maluncho asked the Malini if any arrangement could be made for the education of the boy with her and was told that he might be sent to the guru in the palace, who, besides teaching the princess, received other pupils, no matter whose sons they were. Chandramani, therefore, went there daily for instruction. Seven years passed, in this way, during which the relationship between him and Maluncho was kept hid from him, as well as from the Malini, 
One day, the king's daughter was admitted into the school. After this, she attended it daily but made no progress whatever. Her seven brothers asked her the cause of it. Of this and she coldly confessed that the Malini's boy, as Chandramanik was reputed to be, had so beautiful a face that she could not avert her eyes from it and attained to the lessons. The explanation displeased the princess very much and they thought of a plan to get rid of the boy. It was suspected by the princess that he, the son of a poor Mali, had but a scanty wardrobe and therefore to scare him away from school, they told him that if ever he presented himself before them except in nicely washed clothes, he should lose his head. Deeply wounded at this, he went home with tears in his eyes and told Maluncho the reason. The latter, immediately calling the Malini into her presence, asked her to procure him clothes sur surpassing in quality those owned by the princess. At the same time, putting into her hand a diamond which she had brought from her father's house, the girl's desire was fulfilled and on the next morning Chandramani was at the Patshala wearing his new dress. The princes were astonished and their sister with looks of delight exclaimed, See brothers, here is before you the moon of heaven in human form. This youth can never be a Mali's son. The words cut the brothers to the quick and they conspired to put him into new difficulties. They told him that clothed in so gorgeous a dress, he must not walk to the school but come in a vehicle befitting his clothes otherwise they would cut off his head. The poor boy went home more dispirited than before and being asked the reason unburdened his mind maluncho rich with the money obtained from the sale of the diamond engaged for him the next morning a chaturdola in this the boy went to the patrala to the confusion of the princess and the joy of the princess who now gave out her determination to marry him. Since it was evident she said that he was no ordinary being, but the princes were still full of venom against him and proposed a horse race on the condition that if he failed to be the first to reach the goal, he should forfeit his head. The circumstances being related to her by Chandramanik, Malanchumala, leaving him with the Malini, started in the quest of a fleet horse. Her purse was full and she knew that she could buy an excellent one. An excellent one. The search extended over many days until she reached a kingdom where the king and the people were in deep morning. She asked the cause and was told that a great calamity had befallen them. The swift winged mare of the king had gone furiously mad, devouring men and beasts, destroying all that came within its reach. Being under some strange influence which she could not account for, she ventured to approach the mayor and told her that she was wanted by Chandramani. The mayor seemed to be starting, startled at the name and exclaimed, Oh, lady, my name is Hari Harikali and my birthplace is Chandrapur. Can you tell me where Chandramanik is? Receiving an answer to her query, the mayor ran forward, ran forward, telling Maluncho to follow with as much speed as possible. On they ran until at 
at last the mayor led her into the kingdom of chandramanik's father the people recognized their potal's daughter and reported her arrival to the king the king and queen rushed out and being convinced that it was she were surprised to see that she was still alive bearing no marks of injury on her body they ascribed it to the intervention of the gods and implored her to stop and tell them if a similar miracle had taken place with regard to their son malunchu gave no heed to what they said but ran on still late at night she returned to the malini's house when the next day dawned malunchu fully equipped the mayor and chandramani to shot to vault into the saddle and aided was held up by her and pretending to see how he looked on horseback she cast a tender look up at him and under pretense of clearing his shoes took the dust from under them and put it as if carelessly on her head the boy remarked it and said who are you and what are you to me malunchu said i am a kotal's daughter engaged to look after you the mayor with the right the mayor with the rider reached the palace and the princess were astounded at the sight so good a horse they had never seen and they at once set their heads together to devise fresh means of bringing to grief the man whom they supposed to be but a malice son at length they came to the conclusion that since their word had been given the race must be run in spite of the superiority of their rival's horse consoling 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 themselves with the thought that even if he owned by virtue of their position they could have him beheaded afterwards the race was run and chandramani proved the winner the princess fijing admiration asked him to come with them into the palace with the intention of making a way with him the simple youth was deceived and turned towards the palace gate but the mayor refused to move in that direction until forced to do so by whip and spar as soon as they reached the tower at the gate the princess from the balcony cast down a garland of flowers which encircled the young man's neck the princess were much puzzled the idea was forced upon them that the garland was of betrothed betrothal betrothal so my dear friends what happened next did they succeed to kill chandramani we will come to know in the next episode till now be happy be jolly tada